Hi, it is Heath from VMix and I'm up in Norway today and I'm visiting the National Museum here and I am with Jon Ar Il and he is going to show us around the museum. But before we go in, tell us a little bit about yourself. Yeah, well, I'm uh, originally an audio engineer, um, but that led me into starting some streaming in 2017. Started working here in 2021 uh, and we were advised to start using vMix. Learned that from this guy and Tim and Martin even. So you guys do it a little bit differently here, don't you? Yeah, instead of building a studio and that would make us confined to being there, we, we built a mobile studio and that is not as impressive as every other vMix uh, setup I've seen, but it allows us to have a huge building as our studio so in the end it turns out really well for us. So why don't we head on in and see what Jörn Adil does with vMix. So here we are in the Grand Hall of the National Museum which is one of the rooms that we use for seminars and things um, but before we talk about the tech stuff um, the National Museum has a vision and part of that vision is to make the art available for everybody in Norwegian Norway is a very, very long country. It's not big, but it's very long. So how do we do that? And that's part of that solution is the streaming. Okay, so here we are at your flight case. This is where all of the action happens. It's got a very small footprint. I will say that. Um, let's, let's open it up. Let's have a look. Yeah, yeah. Let's open it up. Ooh, <laughs> look at that. <laughs> Very sharp. Here's our studio. Okay. Yeah. All right. So you've got two monitors. You've got all of your controls through here. It looks like you've got some audio there and uh, a little bit of like NDI networking down the bottom. But let's go through it all in detail, hey? Yeah. We have sort of two use cases <clears throat> with the flight case. Uh, we can do full productions. So we have wireless mics. So with, yeah, with cameras and wireless mics, we can do a full production only with this, we only need power. Um, if there's an audience and there's a PA involved, uh, like here, then I won't use those. I will just get the, um, the line signal from the mixer. And we've also, in our two main rooms, we've hid ceiling mics for audience and ambience. So that comes in on, a, on another channel. So I'll just mix the direct and the uh, room signal. On the back side, there's a Midas mixer, a small Midas mixer. So this is how it would look during a show. Uh, when I'm plugging stuff, I could open and I would do that here. Yep. These are the receivers for uh, wireless mics, antennas for them. Here we have HDMI in and out, as we have on the other side. A wireless mic XLRs, power for the flight, and the switch that does basically everything communication-wise, and uh, the audio mixer, where we plug microphones, audio from the PA mixer, or yeah, everything audio is there. The controls are here. Uh, I like the tactile feel, feel, and if I do uh, pr um, production on my own, I need to quickly maybe mute something or adjust something. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's what this is for. So that's the X-Touch from Behringer? Yeah, but if you want to get into some nitty gritty, we have this window surface, which is always also uh, connected to the mixer. Mm -hmm. So you can do the EQ, compression, and that stuff here. Right. So the way we, wor we would work is mostly do things in here before the show, Yep. and then run it here. What about <laughs> video? Let's, video? Let's look at how the video comes in. Yeah. What cameras have you got? So we've got six Panasonic cameras. Yep, they're, um, they're 4K models by the looks of it. I think they're AWUE 100s. Yeah, 400s. Yes. Those are the mobile ones yep. that we put up wherever we are. All running NDIHX. Yes. Mm -hmm. And then we have the 270s in the auditorium. They come into the switch, plug them in at the back. They'll pop up here uh, in, in vMix and uh, the controller. So I use... I actually use a bit of both. This is the Panasonic controller. Mm -hmm. I feel the joystick here is a bit more sensitive. Yes. Use that for fine tuning. Sure. 
but we have the scar here that also controls the cameras. When we're doing the production, I need to do something very quickly. It's, yep. it's very nice to have those rough adjustments like on your hand. Nice, yeah, great. Okay, I can also see you've got two Stream Deck XLs there. What do you use those for? They are running the companion software. The left one is communicating directly with the six cameras, four presets for each camera. Yes. Hold the button to store, mm -hmm. quick push to trigger. Yep. Works perfectly. The other one is more flexible, but I usually have lower thirds. We might do seminars where there are you know, 15, 20 people. I prefer to make the lower thirds in Premiere mm -hmm. because the museum is quite strict on design. So I make them in Premiere with Alpha and I import them here and yep. I put name for each person. That's the fastest possible way I can get to get to that name. <laughs> and yeah, and then I have some banner, like production specific pictures. I have cut auto, merge, stinger. I like to have some redundancy. So if, for example, the score was to break down, I could do it with the Stream Deck. Yep. The Stream good. Decks are co uh, connected via USB. So if there was something network related, I could do it there. Let's look at the bird dog decoders down here and encoders. It looks like you've got the full suite running yeah. under there. <laughs> yeah. We Very have cool, as well as some two, spare two ones yeah, there. Because we have so. one, uh, one with SDI. Yep. If we were working together with someone and mm -hmm. there's an SDI plug, because we're totally NDI. So there are four bird dogs running uh, all the time. Mm -hmm. And two are inputs and two are outputs that can be used for whatever is needed. I have one input and one output on the front of the flight case and similarly on the back. So what I have here is if... Heath was my presenter. He might be telling me about the fine weather. That's where he's from. And uh, I don't believe him. It looks fake. Uh, and then I have this multi-view, so I could merge into that. So here he is. Yeah. Blah, 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 nice weather. And then I might go back to the full room like this. Now let's go and have a look at how you use it in the museum itself, looking at the exhibits. A huge advantage of being in a very, very modern house and well thought through is that we have network and power basically everywhere, like here. So I just have to configure a switch, do the, the right patching, and I'll have whatever I need in basically everywhere. So. For example, here we did, a, we did a stream. Of course, this is a bit challenging because you have the windows, so you can set the right white balance and come back half an hour later and it's different, but it's a beautiful room. So around 1900, uh, Norway was a very poor country. So this guy Langord, who had a lot of art he, and could afford it, he donated his collection to what was then the National Gallery. It was a huge thing for Norway. We did a stream from here on that subject. So the people talking were sitting here uh, and cameras around here. This is where we want to be. Uh, we want this background uh, and we want some footage just filming around. So I, I made a few clips that, uh, that could be edited in that I made beforehand. And then I had to go around to look for those boxes. There's a box there, but that would be in the shot. So we went over here. So what I found here, that box, there was network and power. But what we did was we put up the, this was like a, our control room. So we had everything we needed. And also we're, we can't close the door, but we are separated a little bit but we're close, so if we need to give some instructions or anything, we just pop our head around. Did that on the Monday when the museum was closed, do the show, pack up and roll the streaming flight back to the auditorium. Earlier this year, we had this, for me, coming from audio and music, immensely cool project where some composers composed music inspired by pieces uh, of our collection. And then we had musicians performing that music in front of that 
um, piece. We didn't stream it live, we recorded it live on tape and I did some editing afterwards. We had the control room here and the room that we were filming was this one. So the, the painting that was the, the, um, like the star of the show was this one called Bendik and Oro Lilia. They had made some really cool music and this painting is speaking for me personally. It's sort of creepy. If you look closely, like, oh, there are some disturbing things like how these rooms, I really like it, but it's, it's a little bit weird. So the music was also a little bit weird. So I edited in some of the, like the creepiness that I found. I really like that. What I didn't like was that this room is so red and while I like the color and I like being here, it, I found it really hard filming it. The PTCs have some limitations and in this room I really felt that uh, we were victim of that. But I'm, I'm really happy about that middle part with, where it's creepy and these rooms in here and these people here. I felt that, I, I felt that the, the video piece really gelled with the music. I was really happy about it. So this is the, the monk room. Munk was definitely Norway's most famous painter. He definitely had his own touch, so it's very recognizable what he did. The scream there, one of the more famous paintings in the world. Munk painted four versions of the scream that exists today. And we believe that the one we have is the first one. There are like 400 people employed at the National Museum uh, and I guess 380 of them knows more about art than I do. But I do love art and uh, I'm really proud of working here. I hope this video is interesting for people who use VMIX and I also hope that some of those people want to come to Oslo and look at this museum. It's quite cool. Thank you so much for showing me around the museum, showing me how you use vMix, the flight case that you move around. It was absolutely amazing. I particularly loved seeing all the exhibits, especially the Scream. Truly incredible. Thank you so much. <laughs> thank you. And thank you so much for making the trip around the planet. You're welcome. And, um, thank you for brilliant videos that has taught me basically everything I know about vMix and thank you for vMix. You are very welcome. Yeah. All right, well, that's it for this one. And be sure to keep an eye out. We always like to go to new places to see how vMix is being used. So hopefully you will see another one very soon. See you later. And I am with Jorn Ar... Jorn Ar... Il... Jan... Jorn Ar... I'll tell you my last name. <laughs> go on, tell me now, tell me now. Grefsrud. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, no, no. <laughs> I've been uh, working on my Australian. <laughs> yeah. 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 What? What do you Look got? here. So Look. really poisonous snake. <laughs> um. All right. How do I get this chair taller? Because I feel puny. <laughs> I found it. I found it. No, no. It's the Viking jeans. <laughs> no.